Hey guys, what is up? Hope you all had a great day. Happy to be back with episode 8, part 2 of my golf vlog series. I wanted to give you guys a few updates on the channel while you see me warming up for my round here. So probably the biggest thing you guys have asked for is Shot Tracer. I've been working on getting it ready and I feel very confident in saying that Shot Tracer will be on my videos by the end of next week. Also, I'm in the process of planning a what's in the bag video, which has been very heavily requested, so stay tuned for that video as well. I'll also put a comment in the comment sections asking if there's any ideas for videos you guys would like for me to try, because while I do hope and believe that this vlog series will be the cornerstone of my channel going forward, I do want to keep it fresh and exciting for you guys by doing unique videos that include fun challenges, instructional style videos on how to hit it longer as well as other types of unique videos. So definitely let me know in the comments if there's anything you guys would love for me to try to do with a video or any cool ideas, and I will definitely do my best to provide that content for you guys. As my number one goal with this channel is to keep you guys entertained. So with that being said, let's get into the video. So I did overlay the same range session I used on my last video. Going forward, I will try to do two different types of warm-up sessions so I don't just put the same intro on both parts of my video. So maybe I'll do a short game session, put that on part two, and then the range session will be like on part one. I just didn't know if you guys would like this kind of style, so forgive me for only filming one range session. So, But I do think the intro was pretty good and was a pretty good flow, gave the video a pretty good flow. So on this little video here I was actually race, racing darkness so you guys will get to see me pretty much playing in pitch black by the end of the video which I think is pretty cool so and it did start to get really really cold so I had to contend with a lot of I basically had to contend with distances being not so great and all that stuff as well so let's get into it so hole 10 par 4 428 yards Hitting driver off the tee here. Just trying to get it just left in that bunker. Hit a really great shot here. 140 miles an hour in the club speed, 205 ball speed. Good numbers there. Pretty much prime position. So that was a good start there. So I have 67 yards left with my second shot. Have a 60 degree wedge in. And I pretty much hit it exactly where I was trying to, but look at this bounce. That pretty much bounced dead sideways. So. That was pretty crazy to see how that ball reacted on the green. I really thought that would have been a little bit closer. So, I have about 10, 12 feet for my birdie here. And if you guys didn't watch part one, definitely check that out. These greens were very tough for me to pick up on all day. And as you can see, I left that putt short there. So, a little bit of a disappointing birdie there. And now we're going into hole 11. Even par. Par 3, 197 yards with an 8 iron. You can see the pin out there in the middle of the green. Just trying to throw this under the pin. Leave myself an uphill putt. Started this at the right side of the green and I'm carving it right back into the hole. And this was right at the pin. You can see it flew about 190 yards. So it was about 8 to 10 yards short. So I got about 25 feet uphill for birdie. So a really good shot there. And I have noted that I've struggled a lot in the par 3, so it's definitely one of the things that I plan on improving on as I go through this series. So, not the best putt there. Hit a little firm. Got a little bit of work left for my par. Kind of a tough putt. Just put it center cut and just roll it in and made a really good stroke there. So, a pretty solid par there. And on hole 12, even par, par 4, 355 mm -hmm. yards. And sound up. So that was a pretty pure strike right there. Hit it pretty much exactly where I wanted it to. Started it just left of that far right bunker and carved it just around that last tree there. Left myself in perfect position. And to this point, including the front nine, I've been playing really well at tee to green. Just been struggling a bit around the green here. And I have an absolutely perfect look at it here. And you'll see I yanked it left. Distance was really good though. It was pretty much pin high. It was on the back fringe, but the pin was way back. So as you can see, it actually, I thought it was a lot further away, but it was only about 20 feet away. So I just got to get that line dialed in, and that would be a really close, probably would have been the shot I have right there for birdie if I had the line dialed in. 
but ended up two putting for par, so kind of a disappointing par. And hole 13, par 4, 414 yards. Just trying to carry it over that fairway bunker right there. Kind of blooded out to the right. Didn't hit it very pure. And it was really starting to get cold now. Because at this point, it was probably like 6.30, 6.15, 6.30. And it was got dark at 7.48, I think, with sunset. So even though I am wearing short, long, even though I am wearing pants and short sleeves, it was probably under 50 degrees at this point. So speeds are going to drop a little bit and distances are going to drop as well. But that's just part of playing golf when it's not super warm out. So kind of made a mess of that uh, that white shot there. If it rolled, if it bounced a yard or two further, it probably would have been really close. But just missed in the wrong spot there. Should have probably missed long here. So I have about 20 feet off the fringe. Just didn't really read the putt very well. It's kind of a very indifferent putt. And I have about four or five feet left here for par. Breaks right to left, and unfortunately I didn't play that break, so that was a very ugly bogey. It's kind of cringeworthy to watch the playback, especially when you see how you, how you, how badly you're throwing shots away. So hole 14, one over, par 5, and sound up. That was probably one of my best drives of the day. I definitely had a little anger from that display I had around the green on the last shot, last hole. So let me guys know if you ever find yourself hitting it a bit further the hole after you three putt or you're just really angry. I'd be interested to hear what you guys have to say with that. So I actually have a little side note to mention about this shot here. On my track man, the curve on this shot was 0, 0.0 feet. So even though this is a bit of a push, it went completely straight, which I thought was kind of kind of neat. So if only I would have started it right at the pin, might have gone in. So this was just a tremendously terrible shot. I caught this a bit thin. Pretty much came within an inch of just straight up sculling it over the green. So I caught just enough under the ball for it to get up in the air at least. So yeah, another really, really bad shot around the green. And that's kind of how this round's been marked thus far is just pretty, really good performance, honestly, to the green. Just really per poor performance around the hole and I'm definitely liable to have that happen every once in a while for sure so I mean when you guys see me play well and shoot par even if you under par that's when I'm not totally screwing up around the greens but when I get into the high 70s maybe even 80 once in a while you'll you'll definitely notice it's because my short game suffering so it's kind of hit or miss so hole 15 here and just a terrible miss hit and check that out the launch angle was 0.1 degrees so that almost got launched at a negative angle, which means that the ball was almost going down off the tee. So that was just just a very bad shot. But fortunately for me, it stayed in the fairway. So kind of got away with a really bad shot there. So, But it was nice to see I was able to miss that well. So maybe I can start learning to miss that good in the future. So still very good position to attack this hole. Pin was in, the, I believe, the back center kind of a blind shot here and when I hit it I, I thought I pulled it left of the green I didn't actually the bunker was covering up the very left edge of the green so I didn't realize how far left the green actually went so I'm thinking I hit this left of the green and over but it actually held the fringe you can see I'm like on the absolute edge of the green pin high so my numbers were really good with my wedges I'm feeling very confident with my touch my wedges it's really just at this point getting my line dialed in and started to make some putts. I really do think there's a good chance in the next couple months, especially with the greens getting better and me being able to play more and it getting warmer, I wouldn't be too surprised if I sh put it together one of these days and shoot like a 65 or 66 if my wedges are dialed in and I'm not making stupid mistakes. So I hope I can shoot a score like that for you guys. That'd be really great. So par three, absolutely totally enforced air here. Pulled it left. And this ended up going in the water. I was very lucky. It did at least get onto the other side and then bounce in so I could drop on the other side. But, yeah, when you have a pitching wedge in your hand, it's not very good if you hit it into the water. So, my third shot, very difficult shot here. I thought it was going to be really good, but it just, the wheels on this ball got cut off going up that slope. So, I had about probably 12 feet left here for my bogey. Just trying to make a good stroke. 
because the reality is with these greens being air fired, you just kind of have to give up control because there's not too much you can do about how the ball is going to roll when these greens are air fired. So just make a good stroke. And yeah, I didn't really make a good stroke and very bad read anyway, so it didn't really matter. So double bogey, definitely not a good shot, no, not a good hole there. So hole 17, three over, longest par four in the course, I believe, and letting it go with the driver. Started this a bit right and a bled a bit right too. I actually thought this would be in the fairway. I didn't realize how close the fairway, how close the rough came into the fairway. So you will see that I will be in some rather thick rough here. So kind of had a tough little eye. You can see I'm choking down a bit here. Just trying to pop it out and make sure I get the club first. I mean, rather the ball first. And that's a little tip. If you guys want to get better out of really thick rough, take a higher lofted club, open the blade up, and make your number one priority hitting the ball first. And then beyond that, your second priority should be to make sure the ball doesn't jump so much that it gets you in trouble long in the green. So you'll see here, I purposely abbreviated that shot so that I would leave it short. And even though I left myself a 40-foot birdie putt here, it's much better than being 30 yards long if you catch a hot one out of the rough. So at this point, you guys can probably tell it was dark. I was turning my camera's exposure up as high as I possibly could. It, I could I remember barely being able to see the hole on this putt. So, I mean, it was you can see the lights on and everything. It was dark. So, another really bad bogey there. So, I've really been dropping a lot of shots in the last couple holes. And then hole 18, it was pitch black. I mean, I but I was bound and determined to finish. And so, sound up. But... This is a par five, and I, I literally could not see beyond about 150 yards, so I just hit a two iron. It's a good thing I did because there was water, as you can see. So I can barely see the outline of the green, and I was able to figure out the pins in the middle. 240 with a three iron, and I rifled this right at the pin. And I looked at the carry on my track, and I was like, holy crap, this could be close. The ball landed about four feet from the hole. But it bounced over the green, unfortunately. So you can see I'm over the green here. And I got a bit of a tricky flop shot back down. Really wish I would have hit this shot in more light so that you guys might be able to see the ball better. So I hit it about probably 12 feet past the hole here. I and I, Do you guys ever, when you're playing in the dark, start having issues with perception of how far the ball is away from you? And has it ever caused some mishits? Because it definitely gave me some issues. So... I will knock this one in for a 39. I hope you guys liked the video. Please comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.